I keep learning 3D industry secrets to apply to my own 3D models, and it's all because anime gacha games like Zenless make their character models available for absolutely free. There's so much we can learn just by loading their model into Blender, and I'll share some of those things with you today, including this genius rigging technique. Now, a lot of people were struggling to get their hands on these free models and open them up. So if you need help with that, I can show you right now. But if you just want to skip to the good stuff, this is the time. Anyways, to examine their models yourself, you'll need three things, and all links are in the description. You need a compatible Blender version, so 3.3 is perfect for this. This is the one I used. You just go here, download it, and for me, the best option is just the Windows installer. Go install it on your computer. Next, you'll need the Blender MMD Tools plugin. Link is in the description. Just go ahead and download this zip file. Then find the path of the Blender version you just installed and unzip it in their add-ons folder. So in your Blender add-ons folder, scripts, add-ons, you should have the unzipped MMD tools folder. For some reason, we can't install it in Blender using the usual way. We have to put it directly into the folder. Next, you'll need the models themselves. So you can Google this or just get the link in the description. The links are all in this post. So this is the one I went to for Jane Doe. Today, we're going to pick up the new character, Evelyn. So I just follow the link. And when you get to this page, you're going to scroll down until you see this square with the characters in it and it has left and right buttons. Just go to the one you want. We want Evelyn. So I'm going to go ahead and download that and unzip it. And last but not least, if you want to <laughs> follow along with the physics lesson that we're going to explore today, go ahead and go to this uh, wiggle bones download. Just get the zip file, unzip it onto your computer, then go to preferences, add-ons, install, go to where you unzipped it, find the .py file, and then install the add-on. Go ahead and search for it and then make sure it's checked. And then also check your MMD tools plugin, just in case you have not already. Okay, so now how do we actually get this model into the scene? You can just go to File, Import, Miku Miku Dance Model, which is the format that they're providing. The file with the larger size will be the one you're looking for, so go ahead and hit the Import button. As you can see, we have imported her into the scene. Now, I'll leave it up to you how you want to light the scene. Let's start exploring this model. This is what impressed me the most. This is a tech that has caught my eye recently, which I will call the Miracle Bone. This is what it does. When you move it, it moves both hips. It's the hip controller bone, and the thigh bones are parented to it. So that's why when you move it, all of this moves. Which, by the way, this thigh bone system is not something you see every day. Usually everything is put into this bone right here, but actually this green bone on top is what controls the actual leg moving. And then this bone right here, it just controls the internal and external rotation of the upper leg. Similar thing going on with this. This does not come with the default meta rig that comes with Blender. This is that custom stuff. And if you're wondering, they have four pairs of jiggle bones. This top one is for the entire buttock area, and it's parented to that hip controller bone. These bottom three are connected to the leg bone instead. And this one is the bottom of the butt, and we've got one specifically for the, for the cheek crease area and a little bit of the thigh, which by the way, there are thigh jiggle bones as well, right here, connected right to the thigh main bone, which is crazy. Uh, if you've seen her animations in game, you know that all this has physics. And actually, we can kind of replicate that right now if you want to see. I showed you how to install the Wiggle Bones add-on earlier. So over here in object mode, I'm just going to click the bone tab. I'm going to make sure Wiggle Bone is checked. Then I'll go over to pose mode. All of these bones, can I just select all of them? I'm going to enable the Wiggle Bone for now, this actually has a bunch of settings that you can control exactly how much jiggle you want. I'm not going to play around with that right now. I'm just going to select, again, the hip controller bone. If I press the play button, I can see it animate in real time. That is crazy. That's... Wow! Anyways, this is an MMD model, so I'm not sure that they have this functionality in the actual game itself. For those that are not aware, MMD is just when like they make the character dance to certain songs. And that's quote unquote the real reason that Hoyo <laughs> released these models. But that's why I highly speculate that these models probably have different optimizations when it comes to the actual game and like combat and stuff. 
I'd imagine this would be so useful for like any dance move that involves shaking the hips, catwalking animations. This is just a one-stop solution for all that movement going on back there. Looks like they have one for the calf as well. They've also got a multi-point solution for the breasts. All seems to be parented to this bone. And this is how they've had their waiting set up. I'm not going to be demonstrating this one today because we have other stuff to cover. <laughs> Moving on, let's take a look at our mesh. And as someone said before, you can select all with A and then you can use tries to quads or all J to untriangulate it so you can see all the quads. But I'm not going to do that right now because here's the thing. These modelers, let me let me tell you what they do. Let, 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 let me see if you can see. But their topology is so precise that every accessory and clothing piece is lined up. Usually you'd think like it wouldn't matter where they place the texturing or the details of these like strap thingies. They literally align the topology right to it. It might be better when it's all orange like this that you can see like this goes all around that strap. There's a strap that goes around here and they literally, they cut this topology in. And for this, they need to specify which direction the triangles are facing or else it might not line up like this. This is not without its purpose. Like it's going to pay off. The payoff is that if you don't do this, the textures will be pinched in between faces, which will lead to deformations that don't look good when the character moves a certain way. And related to that point, any, any clothing that's skin tight, it's literally just textured in. If you're like me, you might have been using this easier but much less efficient method where if you have any skin tight clothing, you just duplicate all of the faces of the body in that area and then you make your clothing like that, for example, these pants. It doesn't matter too much if you delete the body faces under afterwards, like after you rig it, but these guys save literally every single vertex that they can. And to prevent it from getting flat, You've noticed they extrude it at certain areas, like this is the exact location where this went from being flat to having that slightly extruded detail. Let me see where else. So this, this belt strap thing, flat and right onto the skin, then here, extrudes out. And that's something we can all appreciate because we've come so far from the days where everything was just textured onto the model. Now there's so much effort in putting even the like so many tiny details modeled out like this. That just makes me wonder what was their process? Like did they just slide the edges and make knife cuts after texturing? Or did they topologize first and then use the UV lines as guides when texturing? Both viable possibilities, I suppose. As usual, her facial expressions are controlled by shape keys. As someone mentioned, we can have these translated. The one I used kind of failed, but it did give me most of them. Maybe you'll have better luck with a better translator if you decide to do that. Now here's something a little unusual. They didn't do this one with the Jane one, but the eyes are not shape keyed. They're actually armature rigged. Did they do this for Jane? I actually don't know. Same with the brows too. I don't think there's a shape key for the brows. They just have it controlled by these two bones. Again, if you look at her bangs, like around this area, definitely around here, you can see it's semi-transparent. And if you want to mimic that in Blender, use a different material for specifically only the parts that you want to be semi-transparent. Then you can pause and copy my node setup here. We're just mixing the image texture with a transparent BSDF and using mapping to control where the hair starts fading out. And with a color ramp, we can control how tight we want it and how see-through we want it to get. Make sure your blend mode is set to alpha hashed or alpha blend or else you won't see any transparency. Okay, look at this. This part... That's just textured in. But this part, like the hair, it's, uh, it's actually transparent. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I think we might have caught Hoyoverse lacking this time. Hold up. Hold up. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm surprised it even got to like halfway, you know. It's actually kind of surprising. Here's another random small thing I noticed. Inside the sleeve, we got this cone thing. 
that plugs up this entire inside, prevents you from seeing it. And actually, I see why they did this now. Because from here, it's it's not a flat plane, but once it gets to this area, it's flat. And they've called the back faces, which is why it's invisible when you see it from the inside, but not on the outside. So they cover that up. We're saving a lot of faces on these parts that we know will never bend, like this part of the forearm, this part of the bicep. The calves and thighs have physics, so it makes sense why those are not like saved on. But while we're on the topic of the forearm, they've also got these twist bones, which come in like halfway. And the purpose of these is just to offload some of the twisting on the wrist to the forearm. Because uh, in real life, when your wrist twists, your forearm also twists. So if you don't have that, like here, see how I'm moving it from the wrist. It's going to get real unnatural, even going to a wrist up position. So everything's going to get pinched. That's what the forearm twist bone is for. Yeah, how much more natural that is. They got one for the bicep as well. So that's what that twist bone has control over. Anyways, that will be it for today. Hope you enjoyed our little study session. There's always something new to learn even across characters from the same game. There was some new stuff and variations of things from their older models in this one. Now I know you guys have been requesting me to look at other games as well, especially Girls Frontline 2 and Arknights Enfield. Trust me, I do want to deep dive on Enfield's models if I could get my hands on them or if you know, they released their game already. But either way, lots more 3D content coming your way. So do subscribe and stay tuned if you want to come learn 3d together you can also check out the new discord and twitch i'm trying to gauge like how many people would be interested in that kind of thing so links will be in the description as well see you in the next one